Everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point, and we are here with the sad news of the passing of the Reverend Dr. Lena McLean. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know she was a great influence in the life of singer R. Kelly, but she was also a Chicago icon and an institution in the music industry. And according to ABC7, she passed away on Tuesday night. Um, she was famously known as the woman who launched a thousand careers. McGlynn has worked with some of the biggest celebrities in the music industry. In addition to Mr. Kelly, she also worked with Shaka Khan, Tony Award winning actor Mandy Pantakin, and also Jennifer Hudson. Um, Pantakin was quoted as saying, I'll never forget one day in chorus, she said, sing something. I sang and I thought I was going to get in trouble. She said, child, anybody who tells you not to use that voice, you tell them, come see Lena. And she gave me the courage to use my voice any way I chose and I'll never forget it. McLean spent several years as a choir director at Kenwood Academy High School on Chicago's South Side, inspiring hundreds of students over the years to be their best selves, stand tall, and lift their voices. Her legacy is dramatically profound. Her plate was completely full, and it didn't even feel that way for her, McLean's grandson, William Kirk said of his late grandmother. In a 2015 article with ABC News, um, R. Kelly said that he owed everything to Lena McLean, his music mentor from high school. Now he's repaying her by helping her keep her home in Chicago. And then they go on to talk about how the Grammy winning singer 48 performed a benefit concert in Miss McLean's honor and that Kelly first met the teacher when he started school at Kenwood Academy more than 30 years ago. And Kelly was quoted as saying, on the first day I met her, Miss McLean told me, you're going to be one of the greatest singers, songwriters, and performers of all time. She taught me opera, classical music, jazz, gospel. Um, she also said that you are music. You're not in any one category. Anything you attempt, you'll be able to tap into the spirit of it, and that's the gift you have. She made me. So the 87-year-old at the time, I believe she's, she's 95 when she passed, um, she taught for 36 years but had been fighting to keep her apartment. Her pension didn't cover the condo, and um, she was currently, oh, they were converting the apartments to condos and um, she didn't know how she was going to pay for it. Kelly went on to say in this article, I cleaned that apartment so many times, just paying my dues, no different than I would clean my mom's house. Nobody could do what she did for me. Nobody was even interested in doing what she did for me. Nobody, even to this day, nobody has my interests like she does. Now you guys who watched Surviving R. Kelly might recall that um, Dr. McLean actually had a segment on Surviving R. Kelly. Now, I did not watch Surviving R. Kelly. I've told you guys that a million times. But I did find an article that quoted what she stated. And I know there was some controversy where people were saying, you know, she didn't know what she was saying, that she was too old, that they took advantage of her and that she really didn't mean what she said or that it was edited. But like I said, I didn't watch Surviving R. Kelly, so I don't know. I'm just going to read this quote that I came across that was attributed to her. And in this article, it says um, she shared with SRK docuseries producer Dream Hampton 
Um, I was impressed and I was amazed because he was musically genius material. He didn't talk about home life, but you knew about it because it came out in the music. Children ex express what they fear or they love. What's around them, you know. He was very, very aggressive. Aggressive in some of his sexual language, which we had to discuss that it wouldn't really be appropriate at the school and that it wouldn't be appropriate, period. I often told Robert he should not meet um, young girls and don't give me no bullshit about that. You should not meet them. And that was my language to him consistently. He has no business around them. They were too young for him. I told him, go on and live your life the way you want to live it, but don't bring that on somebody else's life. And so it's important to point out that during the time period where he was going, to, supposedly going to the school, he would have been, let's see, 67, 87. He probably would have been about 23 years old. People like to try to paint the picture that he was 50 years old or whatever. And so he's going to the high school to be mentored to by Dr. McLean. And so people love to say that, you know, he was there preying on people, but it did come out during his trial that he was there getting tutored. And then all these teens, you know, because he was a hot new artist on the scene. And so, you know, he was on his way to becoming a superstar. And so kids would come from, and I shouldn't say kids, teenagers from other high schools would come to Kenwood because word had gotten around that he was there. And so they would come there to meet him to get autographs. And so that was her um, part of what she said. I don't know what else she said um, during the docu, um, I call it a docudrama. But anyway, he, I believe, loved her and loves her to this day. And I'm sure he is in deep mourning upon learning about his passing and so, you know, keep him in prayers. I know his supporters are constantly praying for him and, you know, praying over him. So this is just one more thing added to his plate um, that, you know, could des definitely bring him down. So you definitely want to keep him in your prayers along with her family. And so she had a great legacy. I, for one, did not know, you know, all the things that um, she had um, done in life. And so with her music career, it says that McLean founded the McLean Ensemble in the 1950s, during which time she was serving as the public relations director of the Park District Opera Guild. She and the ensemble made their operatic debut in November 1960 at the Abraham Lincoln Center in Chicago with the performance of The Cloak. McLean and her husband Nathaniel was founded, also founded the McLean Opera Company in the mid-1950s, funded with their own money. The company was named the nation's leading small opera company by the Washington Afro-American in 1965, I guess that was a publication. Under her direction, the company performed on stage as well as on radio and television networks. Her own opera, O oh Freedom, was played at Carnegie Hall in 1983. McLean composed a wide range of music, including cantatas, masses, and rock operas. Her work has built from both European classical traditions and tradition African-American music and works large and small that in essence merged European, European and African-American languages, according to Rich, who is someone who's given them this information. Um, she also fronts the gospel group Lena McLean and the McLean Singers. In all, she has composed more than 400 cantatas, masses, solo and choral arrangements of spirituals, anthems, art songs, gospel songs, rock operas, soul and pop songs, works for piano and orchestra, and electronic music arrangements, including Free at Last, A Portrait of Martin Luther King Jr., and Gwendolyn Brooks, A Musical Portrait. 
In 2011, a tribute to her musical career was held at the Emanuel Baptist Church. She was an honoree of the Human Symphonies Foundation Living Legends Award in 2007. McLean had two children, Nathaniel Jr. and Beverly, with her husband, Nathaniel McLean. In 2008, the Illinois House of Representatives adopted a resolution that we congratulate Reverend Dr. McLean, Lena J. McLean, on this momentous occasion and wish her continued health happiness and music in her life upon the occasion of her 80th birthday. McLean was awarded honorary degrees by the Virginia Union University and Spelman College. She was also a 2003 recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Chicago Music Awards. And she, Selena McLean died on October 4th, 2023 at the age of 95. A life well lived. Rest in peace to her. And once again, prayers to her family as they mourn the loss. And prayers to Chicago as they mourn the loss of someone who contributed great um, to their city and to this country. So guys, that's it for me. Go ahead, leave your comments below. Rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.